Hello guys, I'm finally back and this time I have prepared a great Metasys tutorial. I will show you how to calculate the average temperature of multiple sensors using LCT logic on your NAE. And this Metasys tutorial is divided into three examples. Number one, a simple average of three sensors. Not too useful if one of your sensors fail. Number two, an upgraded version of averaging your sensors meaning that if any sensor goes unreliable, make it go to a default value. That way we can calculate a better average. And number three, if one or more sensors go unreliable, we'll take them out of the equation and recalculate the average using only the good sensors. Of course, if any sensor comes back online, we will automatically reevaluate the average. And I call this the controls hero way. So let's get started. So I have here a standalone NAE55, Metasys version 11, but this tutorial will be good with earlier versions of Metasys. Okay, I will start by showing you the sensors that we have. So I'm going to go to my trunk one. I have a Zones controller and I do have a BAB controller. So let me pull that for you. And you can see that we have uh, three zones under my zone controller and four zone temperatures under my BAB. Now I'm gonna go ahead and create the average of my three sensors. So I'm gonna go to my programming folder. I'm gonna go to my zone average example one. I'm going to insert a control system. I'm gonna go to next. And I'm just gonna leave that name for now. And finish and done. So here I created my system one. Now I'm going to go to view panel layout and single panel to have one window. I'll double click on my system one. I'm going to go to edit. And here's when you where you create your LCT logic. And I can start by adding my three sensors. So I'm going to expand my zones and I'm just going to highlight my first sensor. Go to attributes and input reference. That's how you add it. Or you can do multiple ones. So I can shift click and select multiple ones and just drag over the input reference. And then I want to go to statistical button and then get my average. Now, since we have three sensors, I got to double click my average and pick three and click OK. Now I will make my connections and rearrange a little bit. And for this tutorial, let's write the average to an analog value. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my folder where I have my uh, control system. I'm going to go to insert object AB analog value next and I'm just going to give it a name of a, uh, let's see zone temperature average just for short and you can put a description or even change the units. I can do degrees Fahrenheit then go to next and finish and done. Now notice that we have our three input reference. So now we got to add our zone average as our output. So I'm going to click on it. So I select it. Then I'm going to go and click on attributes. And now I'm going to do an output reference. I'm just going to drag it over. And then I'll make my connection. And for now I'll use uh, priority 14. Okay. I'm going to save and you can see that it will automatically calculate the average. Simple enough, right? Now here's the big issue that I have. What if my sensor number number one fails? Okay, it went unreliable. Now you can see that my new calculated average is actually 164,000 and something. So this is a big issue. So why this is a problem? Let's say that we have an air handler that is controlling to the average of these three zones. So if one fails, you're going to get a really high temperature value, meaning that the air handler is going to think that it's super hot. So it's going to go into full cooling forever because it's never going to be able to lower the temperature. Now, if our sensor goes back to normal, everything is going to be good, which this is not the best approach. Now let's go to our second example, the upgraded approach. Here you can see that I added two more sensors. So we are averaging five now. So here if a sensor goes unreliable, we don't want it to go to a very big number or a super low number. We just want the sensor to go to a decent value. So I'm going to go ahead and edit my control system. And I'm going to add a constant, a float, which a float is like a number, right? 
and let's say that I want this to be 71 and I'll, this is optional adding the units and here's the trick I am going to connect my 71 constants to the REL input which stands for reliability so basically if any of these sensor goes unreliable it's gonna go to the reliable input and to make this more clean I'm just gonna right click or select my connection right click on it and just hide it and I can just double click on it and call it default value or default okay and it goes like that so I'm gonna save so now everything is looking good. We can see that we have an average of 71 degrees. So let's say that we fail sensors number one and three. And you can see that they didn't go to a high number. They went to 71 and 71, which is the default. So the average really didn't get affected. So this is a way much better approach, right? Now let's say that our sensor number three goes back to normal. There you go. So still not bad as long as all of your sensors are around the same number, right? Now let's say that you want to do the extra mile and make it even better, more solid. So I'll show you that in the next example. Now example number three, if one or more sensors go unreliable, we want to take them out of the equation and reevaluate or average. So I'm going to start by changing my default value to zero, not 71. And there's a reason for that. I'll explain later. And I'll change my connection label to zero. So I will double click on it and just type zero. Now here's the ironic part. We don't need an average. So I'm just going to select it and hit delete. And what we want to do instead is I want to add the value of all my sensors and divide them by the number of the reliable sensors. So I'm going to go to math and get a plus uh, module. I'll double click on it and pick five because we have five sensors and I'll make the connections. Now I'm going to add a division. So I go to this module X divided by Y, drag it over. And so you can follow me. I'm going to add a constant. I'll delete it later, but I want to make a point. I'll give, I'll give it a number five because we have five sensors. So if I add all my sensors and divide them by five, that's going to give me the average, right? So I'm going to save so you can see where we at. So what we have done so far, we have created an average manually by adding all my numbers and dividing them by five. So let's test it and see what happens if we fail sensor number two. So the sensors goes to zero because that's my, that's my default value. And now our division goes all wrong, 57. This is not a good average, right? So if you look closely, we have a fail sensor and this sensor went to zero. So we are actually adding up one, two, three, four sensors, not the one that is unreliable because it's zero. So, so what is missing in the equation is to identify the number of sensors that are reliable so we have four so we need to divide this number by four not five this means that we need to add more logic to our control system so we need to make our number five dynamic or variable not to be a constant so it will update as the number of sensors update okay so here's the trick it's going to be a little bit confusing but you will eventually get it i want to count the number of reliable sensors like in this case, we have one, two, three, four reliable. So if I have four, I want to divide this number by four. If I have two sensors reliable, so I only want to count two. So whatever the sum of this and this will give me, we're going to divide it by two. So I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to add a control. A, this symbol, which kind of stands for not equal. And the symbol is like a less than and greater than. So I'm just going to drag it over. And I'm going to create five of these. So I'm just going to click on them. Right click and duplicate or control D. And I'll be moving things around. 
Once I have all five, I'll connect my zone temperatures to the X input. Now I want to connect zeros to my Y input, so I'll use the zero that I already have. And you can leave the DF alone, which stands for differential, or just give it a zero. And now I want to add all my outputs. So I go to math, click on the plus, double click, and make it five, because we have five outputs, and make the connections. So this logic is gonna count the number of good sensors. And I'm gonna explain that soon. So now as you expect, this count is gonna replace my number five. So I'm gonna click on it and delete it and just make the connection. And now I'm gonna make it a little bit nicer so you can follow it easily. And there you have it. Now I'm going to save it and see the results. Now, this is what's going on. This is a not equal operator. You can see it right there. And this is how it works. So basically, if my X input, which is 71, is not equal to Y, which is zero, it's gonna output a true, which is true. 71 is not equal to zero. It gives me a true. Now the next one, X is zero and Y is zero, right? So zero is equal zero. So this not equal is gonna output a false. So basically every time our sensor is not equal to zero is gonna give me a true. And you can see that this is a true false or a Boolean output, but LCT considers Boolean as a true equals one and false equals zero. So we have one, two, three, we have four trues, meaning that if you add them all, it's gonna give you a four. So that's what we wanted. We wanted to add only the reliable numbers, in this case four, and the one that is not reliable is a zero, so that's why it's not counted in the sum. And the sum of these four numbers, we wanted it to divide it by the number of reliable sensors, which is four. And now it's giving me an actual average. Now let's fail two more sensors. Now you can see that Sensor number three is not equal zero. Sensor number five is not equal zero, so it's giving me a true and a true. So one and one equals two. And the sum of three and five is 144, and we divide that by the number of reliable sensors, two. And it gives me a true average. And this is it. Make sure you take a screenshot so you have it for your records and give it a try. Thank you very much for watching. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And let me know what you think or if you have your own technique to make this simpler. I would love to hear from you. So please comment below. Thank you until next time.